dedicated to honoring the rich tapestry of cultures, traditions, and histories that Nelson Kholisasa Mandela tried to weave to form a new nation and a nation. Honorable Minister. Uh, honorable Speaker. Honorable Members. I greet you all during this wonderful period of our democracy. Our democracy is celebrating 30 years of existence. By celebrating our 30 year existence, does it no means mean that the path was easy or smooth? Where we find ourselves have been a road less traveled, a difficult but a much needed road. It was not so long ago when some white people was stocking up on groceries in preparation for war, stocking up on ammunition in preparation for the sure war that was to follow with the release of Nelson Mandela and his comrades. They were not the only ones. Some amongst us prepared themselves to drive white people into the sea. Also, some of which I was part of, prepared ourselves to take over the beautiful houses by white people, which we've admired with a great sense of anger and murmuring under our breath with the words, one day is one day. That day arrived, Madam Speaker, with the release of Nelson Rolisasa Mandela and all the struggle heroes. Mandela defied those amongst us which included myself, those that wanted to revenge, whites that was prepared to kill to keep the land, and blacks that was willing to kill to take the land. Mandela became a voice of peace and reason. Mandela spoke to all. That message was meant for us as South Africans, the peace message. But it was so big and unavoidable that the world took it in greatly and wholeheartedly. The ones who were taught racism when they were still wet behind their ears are the same ones today whose eyes get wet when they sing Morena Bulukasi Chabasa Yesu. Those that was willing to die in order not to speak the Afrikaans language. Today, are the same ones that sings a blow fan on the Yamal with the same gusto at which they fought the Afrikaans language. Our cultures, Madam Speaker, and heritages might be different, but our love for South Africa is the same. We have achieved the miracle. The world still use us as an example, when they speak about people who has put the country above hate and prejudice. The world still speak about us when they speak about people who put the country above everything else in order to attain peace and reach the promised land. We are one nation under God. We are the children of Nelson Mandela. It is not Uhuru yet, but we will get there. Those that died for our freedom will smile today because their death was not in vain. We have not reached all the things they fought for, but we are very strong on our way. We are a melting pot of different cultures, Madam Speaker. Our canvas is multicolored and beautiful and admirable. The GNU is another testament that we still have the will and potential to find each other when things are difficult and confusing. I want to pay tribute today to everyone who contributed towards this freedom, from those that took up arms to those that fought in song and culture. We are a great nation indeed. I'm proud to be from the Koi and San people the people who have contributed... Honourable Minister, uh, there's a point of order. Honourable Skosan. Can the Minister take a question? 
No. You got your response. Uh, continue, Honorable Minister. I am proud to be from the Khoi and San people. The people who have contributed to the following words to our coat of arms. Diverse people unite. Those are not just ancient words for, borrowed from the Earth's oldest people, which they are. Those words are not just on a coat of arms. They are a call to arms for us to keep fighting to create a South Africa that is indeed truly united in its diversity. It's a daily reminder that we need to reach a point in South Africa where the people of this country will not be defined as black, white, colored, or Indian, or what other label you can fashion. We are being called to fight for a South Africa where we have the same access to opportunities and the same potential to be great, a socially cohesive South Africa. Let's ignore those that want to see us return to the days of segregation and embrace the majority that want to see us prosper, Madam Speaker. We still have huge differences, and that doesn't make us enemies. It makes us human. We are not where we want to be. We are not where we used to be. Our road is not easy, nor short. It's a long walk to freedom. As we have been taught by the greatest person ever born in this earth, Nelson Mandela, and was born on our soil. Oh, how lucky we are. We have achieved the impossible, my fellow South Africans. That is unfortunately not the pinnacle. The pinnacle is sustaining the miracle. This is difficult, but doable, and only achievable by listening to those that we disagree with, embracing those that our past want us to dissociate from, but our future demands of us to embrace each other. We have achieved the impossible indeed. Let me end by saying, Madam Speaker, that it is not an easy feat for someone that was in jail for opposite reasons as Mandela to today address Parliament. This feat doesn't speak of an iota of greatness on my side, but it speaks of the magnanimous greatness of forgiveness of South Africans. I thank you from the bottom of my heart in the hearts of my family and those that support my journey. I intend to pay you back by becoming the greatest advocate for what Mandela stood for. We have achieved what no country on earth has achieved. May God bless you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Thank you, Honorable Minister. The MK party stands on the shoulders of a profound legacy shaped by the violent struggles against colonialism and apartheid, guided by heroic deeds of our African kings, chiefs and warriors, kings and chiefs such as the king of the Khoikhoi, the King of the Sons, King Shaga, King Tejoayo, King Pambata, Kamangniza, King Inza, Kakauta, King Makoma, King Skukuni, King Mushweshwe, Queen Labutsibeni, and many others who valiantly resisted the colonial conquest. They exemplified fierce resistance against Dutch and British encroachment utilizing guerrilla tactics to preserve the sovereignty of our country, our land, and their cultural and our cultural identities. Leaders such as King Hama and King Mushosha I did not only fight battles, but they also engaged diplomatically to protect their people from Boer and British pressure. These historic leaders, inspired by their unwavering commitment to freedom, set a foundation of resistance that transcends into today's struggles. The Dutch and British colonization initiated a dark period of violent and ruthless dispossession of our land and cattle from the Khoikhoi, from the San, from the Kosa, from the Pedi, and from the Zulu people. The 19th century set in an era of British imperialism 
fueled by discovery of gold and diamonds, which led to further subjugation of the indigenous population and cemented the, leg the legacy of racial segregation, greed, and economic disparity. Those encounters set the stage for the apartheid system of the 20th century, which institutionalized this, div this divide, leaving a scar in South African society, a fabric that lingers in the contemporary period. South Africa's tumultuous history is steeped in profound injustices, greed, and the scramble for land. There are significant proportions of our, pop of our population who are marginalized, stripped of their dignity, and plundered by a minority, a reality which we face even as we speak today. Over the past 30 years, heritage has been dedicated to honoring the rich tapestry of cultures, traditions, and histories that Nelson Kholisasa Mandela tried to weave to form a new nation and an identity away from its painful past and is supposed to be a day of remembrance and celebration. But unfortunately, it's a day of sorrow. Today, I would like to pay tribute to President Oliver Tambo, who played a crucial role in maintaining the momentum of the liberation movement during a time when political activity was banned in South Africa. Pity it has deteriorated to what it is today. His leadership in exile was marked by an uncanny ability to unite and mobilize a diverse coalition of anti-apartheid activists around the globe. His diplomatic finesse helped Ghana international support, leading to increased pressure on the apartheid regime, the ANC that President Zuma knows. Tambo's vision of a democratic and inclusive South Africa was rooted in his deep belief in human dignity and equality. His tireless efforts laid the groundwork for the eventual dismantling of apartheid and the establishment of a democratic South Africa. Although he passed on a year before the country's first democratic elections, his legacy lives on in the freedoms that we enjoy today. Freedom of speech. While Tambo's contribution were monumental, countless others sacrificed their lives in the struggle for liberation. There are many unsung and unnamed heroes who lost their lives for our liberation, and their stories are woven into the fabric of the South African history. These brave souls faced imprisonment, torture, and death, and yet remained steadfast in their quest for freedom. Countless women and men organized and participated in protests, strikes, and underground activities, which played a pivotal role towards our political emancipation. During Heritage Day, I would like to remember their resilience and courage in the face of an unimaginable adversity which must continue to inspire the generation in the ongoing fight for justice and equality. I would like to remember and pay tribute to Andrew Zondo, not Raymond Zondo, and Solomon Mashangu, who were guardians of freedom. They stand as poignant symbols of resistance against the brutal apartheid regime, both being young men who sacrificed their lives in pursuit of justice and equality, leaving behind legacies that continue to inspire the fight against oppression. Their, <clears throat> their execution is a tragic reminder of the harsh realities faced by those who dared to oppose the regime. Solomon, Solomon Matangu's last words were, I quote, my blood will nourish the tree that will bear the fruits of freedom, close quote. Words which echo the profound impact of his sacrifice. Both Zondo and Mashangu fought, a South Africa, fought, fought for South Africa free of racial oppression and inequality as they envisioned a nation built on principles of justice, unity, and true democracy. We embrace all communities as the MK party, uh, as a result of this uh, democratic dispensation. We embrace everyone. We embrace the colored people. 
who embrace the Indian people, we embrace the Khoi people, we embrace the Sun people, which are now part of a larger South African family. And indeed, I even personally embrace all these groups I've mentioned here. And in MK Party, we are calling on all these groups to know that uh, the MK Party is a melting pot. This is where all of us should uh, uh, end up in. The diversity that has been brought by interacting with all other races and groups has brought about a rich tapestry of ideas, experience, and cultural kaleidoscope that combine to reflect what we want. Today, the political landscape of the coalition arrangement between their organization and the neoliberal right would present challenges that they would critique. The structural, ideological, and epismetic differences embodied in the recent marriage of unlikely bedfellows would be seen as a betrayal of the ideals which they fought for. Comrades should be ashamed. Were Tambo, Biko, and Ani and Mashangu to descend into this good hope today, they would lament seeing this front line. They would reject any alliance that prioritized the political convenience over genuine transformation. I mean, yesterday, the same partners of this coalition were trying to fight against employment equity. Can you believe it? What the nerve? The ideals of the National Democratic Revolution as outlined by Tambo and Mandela have been perverted in the form of this grand coalition, which is a marriage of convenience where an imaginary wedding took place between the National Party of Apartheid, which is now called Democratic Alliance, and the new ANC. Let me conclude. The MK Party, under the leadership of His Excellency President Zuma, is therefore poised to carry forward the torch of liberation, ensuring that sacrifices of our ancestors were not in vain. Their dreams of a just and equitable South Africa should still be realized. Let us use this Heritage Day not only to leverage the rich legacy of our historical battle against the colonial dominance, but also as a foundational pillar for the aspirations of future generations aimed at achieving justice, equity, and prosperity for all our people, regardless of race, color, or creed. Kwaza Mkonto Kwaza! Kwaza Mkonto Kwaza! Welcome to LT Celeb Times. That's it for now, guys. And please tell us what you think about this on the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching.